Let's talk about Kuma. So I recently released a video discussing the rise and fall of Paul Phoenix, and a big part of Paul's story is Kuma consistently popping up like a Zubat in any Pokemon cave. Not Kuma again. You see, I always saw Kuma as this wall that Paul has to battle through in every game. As a generic rival, the writers constantly push as they're too lazy to explore anything else outside the Mishimas. So, Paul fighting Kuma okay with everyone? Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, you know, it's good. Here's the thing though. The more I read into Kuma's lore, the more I realized something. Kuma is just a really cool guy. I mean, bear. Ah, was that insensitive? Here's the thing about Kuma. He is described as loyal, authentic, hardworking, playful, just an all-around cool guy. These are traits I'll expand upon throughout the video. For now, let's go back to the beginning and discuss the lore of the wholesome, lovable bear that is Kuma. Okay, so before I discuss Kuma, we'll need to talk about his dad, Kuma. <laughs> yeah, same name, super creative. Okay, so the original Kuma, let's just call him Kuma 1 for the sake of keeping it easy to understand, was found in the forest of the Mishima estate. He was an abandoned bear cub who was found by Hihachi, who took him in as a pet. So, are you ready for a fun fact that I'm sure 99% of the Tekken audience is already aware of? Hiachi Mishima is Japanese. He called this bear cub Kuma. Kuma 1 specifically is a Japanese brown bear. This has been changed around a bit, but through the power of retconning, he is a brown bear. Kuma, in his native language, is called bear. Now how's that for some S-tier creative writing? It's like me calling my bird, bird, which I, which I sometimes do, but that's besides the point. Anyway, back on track. As Kuma 1 reached adulthood, Hiachi taught him some simple commands and hand signals, which Kuma 1 picked up really quickly apparently. Hiachi realized the power contained within Kuma 1, and so he trained Kuma 1 in the arts of Kuma Shinken and used him as a sparring partner. So, Kuma Shinken refers to a fighting style created and developed by Hihachi Mishima himself for his pet bears. I really get the impression that Hihachi loved Kuma way more than Kazuya. Here's the thing about Kuma 1. He's apparently a bit of a dick. Kuma 1 is described as rude, aggressive, and harbors a taste for human flesh, so not really ideal. Kuma 1 is also quite lazy and takes any possible opportunity to take a nap. Despite Kuma 1's unflinching loyalty to Hihachi, Kuma 1 liked to leave the side of Hihachi to sleep, even during the summer. This lazy approach means that his fighting style never really matured and is a little bit disjointed. In addition, apparently a lot of Hihachi's associates fled the estate out of fear of being eaten by a smart bear. Yes, they were also scared of the fact that Kuma was apparently very smart. So let's discuss the events of Tekken 1 and 2. As I'm sure we're all aware, the general plot of Tekken 1 is Kazuya entering the tournament to get revenge on his father, Hiachi, probably for loving Kuma more than him. Kuma 1 is acting as a bodyguard to Hiachi at this point, so it's only natural that he enters the tournament as well. Now, during this tournament, Kuma 1 was easily defeated by Paul Phoenix. With Hihachi losing to Kazuya, Kuma 1 is now aware that Hihachi is not the only strong human and that others are out there as well. So the two retreated into a mountain dojo to train. The two entered the King of Iron Fist Tournament 2, one set on destroying Kazuya and the other set on destroying Paul. And anyone that got in his way would be eaten. Except Kuma 1 lost to Paul Phoenix again. I'm unsure exactly when this happened, but it happened at some point. And that's practically all we know about Kuma 1. Between the events of Tekken 2 and Tekken 3, Kuma 1 passed away of old age, but not before bringing the current Kuma into the world. So let's discuss current Kuma. From here, I'm just going to call Kuma 2 Kuma. He made a much bigger impact than his father, so I think it's only fair that he gets the OG name. So, much like his father, the current Kuma became Hiachi's pet and bodyguard. At some point as Kuma was growing up, he stumbled upon some footage of Paul Phoenix fighting, and he was so impressed that he immediately started training in order to fight and defeat Paul. Seems like a bit of a shoehorn reason to reignite the rivalry between Paul and Kuma, but nah, whatever, let's keep going. With the King of Iron Fist Tournament 3 announced, Kuma saw his opportunity to do so and entered the tournament. Unfortunately for him, he lost to Paul. Now, this is the moment I started to appreciate Kuma, because Kuma is a stoic bear. He did some self-reflection and came to the conclusion that he had lost due to his comfortable life as a pet. He didn't blame external factors, he looked to self-improve. After losing to Paul Phoenix in the last tournament, Kuma realized that he had lost touch with his wild instincts. He realized that as long as he remained Heihachi's pet, he would be unable to use his instincts to his advantage. So to regain the power of his instincts, he left the comfort of the Mishima estate and traveled to the mountains of Hokkaido. Hokkaido? Uh, the mountains of Hok. I <laughs> cannot pronounce that. 
There, he trained alone in the wilderness. As he worked on his skills, he saw a commercial announcing the King of Iron Fist Tournament 4 through a window in the local village, and knowing Paul would be there, he resolved to enter and defeat him. And he actually pulled it off. Kuma defeated the tank that is Paul. Not Kuma again. Anyone who watched my Paul video would already know this, but Kuma defeating the guy who originally defeated Ogre is a big feat. Unfortunately, he was unable to celebrate for long because news had reached him that his master was apparently killed. Spoilers, he wasn't. And here's another moment where I really started to like Kuma even more. His unwavering loyalty. Because through the grief he had for his master, he learned that the Mishima Zaibatsu was in absolute chaos. Kuma went to the Zaibatsu headquarters with the full intention of saving the conglomerate for Hihachi, but due to some bare insensitivity, he was thrown out by security and forced to return to the mountains. Now, the plot of Tekken 5 is all about Jinpachi, Hihachi's dad. Yes, his dad. <laughs> Sorry, I had to think for a second. Coming back and offering up the Zaibatsu to whoever defeats him in combat. Kuma entered the King of Iron Fist Tournament 5, aiming to take control of the Mishima Zaibatsu via this avenue instead. It turns out that Jinpachi is possessed by some evil spirit of unknown origin. Great writing, guys. And I'm almost certain that Kuma is aware of this, because he says this to Paul when they match up in the fifth tournament. What the? You again? This tournament isn't as it seems. Go home while you still can. I'm gonna prove I'm the toughest in the universe. I don't give a crap about anything. They're not concerned about you. You're going to get yourself killed if you stay in this Shut tournament. Your bare crap. I'm gonna be the toughest in the universe. Toughest in the universe, huh? Well, you're certainly not the brightest. Man, I'm such a good voice actor. Irrespective of the rivalry, it sounds like Kuma here is just trying to warn Paul. Get him to leave for his own good. And even when he loses, the only thing on his mind is saving the Zaibatsu. Honestly, what a great bear. Irrespective of his loss to Paul, Kuma is determined to save the Mishima Zaibatsu and heads to the headquarters anyway and comes across Jin. So, lore wise, as Jin was the one to beat Jinpachi, he took control of Zaibatsu. Jin defeats Kuma pretty easily and dumps Kuma out of a helicopter back into the forest. I realise that Jin is probably fully aware that Kuma is loyal to Hachi and only Hihachi, but this seems like a major dick move. Anyway, Kuma survived the fall, and because Kuma is a loyal Chad, he set out for the Mishima Zaibatsu headquarters again to defeat Jin and take control of the Zaibatsu. Okay, so let me add some quick context here. The Mishima Zaibatsu is currently conducted World War 3 under Jin to awaken a Zazel, and G-Corp under Kazuya is stepping up to combat him. It's a complicated issue, so if you want some more understanding of this, go watch my Azazel video. Before long, Kuma met a Tekken 4 squad who informed him that Hiachi was alive and had returned, taking control again of the Mishima Zaibatsu. From here, Kuma reignited with Hiachi and was made a Tekken Force member. Kuma was then sent to Southeast Asia on disaster relief missions. So here's another reason to like Kuma. So Kuma was always up to volunteer for disaster relief efforts all across Southeast Asia. And on these relief missions, the locals were always wary of Kuma. I mean, not to be insensitive, but he is a bear. But Kuma was always successful in winning the locals over with his playful nature and strong work ethic. So during the events of Tekken 7, Hihachi left to settle the score with Kazuya and is currently at best missing in action and at worst, a bit unalive. Kuma holds Hiachi in such a high regard that he believes that he is still out there somewhere and is currently waiting for his return. With Hihachi gone, G Corp gains the upper hand in battling the Mishima Zaibatsu and even though Kuma goes straight to the Zaibatsu to provide backup, he realises his chance to combat G Corp is long gone. It's at this point that the Zaibatsu leadership has surrendered. Kuma realises that if he lets the Zaibatsu be dismantled, then Hihachi will have nowhere to come back to. Because Kuma is the definition of loyal, he states that he will continue fighting until Master Hihachi returns, even if that means he is the last one standing. Boss. Kuma then trains to perfect his Mishima style, dons the outfit and belt his master once wore, and then goes out and rescues several Mishima Heavy Industries elite engineers from the clutches of G-Corp. These engineers begin development on a secret weapon that is sure to change the game. I'm thinking, and I can't remember the use of any weapon during the Tekken 8 story. Maybe I missed it. Maybe the weapon is Reyna. Hmm, potential theory on the cards. I mean, she did step up to combat Kazuya. Okay, so I'm going to park that theory for a bit. Back onto the events of Tekken 8. Kuma was the winner of the Southeast Asia and Oceania block, and surprise, surprise, he was matched up against Paul in the preliminaries. We don't know for sure who won this match law wise, but considering Kuma went to attack Paul while he was fighting law, I'm leaning to believe that Paul won this fight. Anyway, 
As Kazuya absorbs Azazel and the tournament is suspended, we can see in this shot here that Kuma has joined Team Jin to combat Kazuya. So yeah, during the on-ground battle, Paul, Team Jin, is fighting Law, Team Kazuya, and Kuma, seeing an opportunity to take out Paul, goes to attack him from behind. This sort of backfires however, because he ends up saving Paul's life by taking a missile to the back. Paul misunderstands the situation completely, believing Kuma to have chosen to save his life. And as I said in Paul's video, I think this may have worked out for the best, because the beef is potentially squashed between the two. Because as we can see in this photo taken at the end of Tekken 8, we can see them standing together advertising for the free soup kitchen being run by martial law. And that is the current summary of the history of Kuma. I actually love this character now. He's loyal, playful, hardworking, and to be honest, just an all-around Chad. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, enjoy your day.